for some reason, every time I do a YouTube video, I always either just got a haircut or need a haircut. I think it's usually need a haircut, but um, little pro tip. If you don't know what studio mode is on Aperture Lights, you should read the manual. But if you don't wanna do that, it dictates if the light turns on when you plug it into the wall. Studio mode on, you plug it into the wall, it turns on, studio mode off, plug it into the wall. It does not turn on until you hit the button. Let's talk about shooting in front of windows or with windows in the back. I found myself in this scenario a lot when I was first starting out and I found it always kind of hard to make it look right. And the big part of that is just the size of the source. In this scenario right here, I'm gonna plug back into the wall, studio mode's on. So what we have here is a Leco mount or the spotlight mount pointed at the wall right here and it's fairly big. You can see it on my arm right here, but it goes out from where the camera is, maybe to here. It brings my exposure up obviously to a point where I look more normal. Before we look at the other setups, which I already filmed, I'm just gonna make this light be smaller. You can see how big this is. So I've made it a bit smaller and more in a rectangle. Since we have a window in the back, just letting light in everywhere, bouncing it off the wall over here is kind of like a extension of the window. So moving on to the other shot, the light is behind me off to frame right, pointed at the wall in front of me, bringing that window light around to my face. And then there was another shot where I used a four foot quasar tube over my head just to bring in a little bit of extra light from the top. And then you can see this here with just the light bounced off the wall that's in front of my face. And you can see it with just the quasar tube and you can see it with all of them turned off. Okay, so here's the same lighting setup, camera moved around to the other side of the desk. Let's hit it off. And now we're working with no lighting besides what's coming out from the windows. So let's say we want this to be daytime coming out from the windows. Typically in this scenario, you'd get a powerful light, put it out of the window and push light into the room. We will attempt to work with the window light, make it look a little sunnier, and uh, considering using a mirror. Okay, we are back. I actually did put a mirror right here. It's a small mirror like this big. Leco going into it, spotlight mount. We can see what it looks like off and with it back on. You can see where the hard light stops below my eye. We get some hard light down here. It actually looks like I just turned on the camera with no lighting at all. As always, this is just a starting point. In YouTube videos, you talk right to the camera, but filming yourself talking right to the camera is fine to practice and everything, but it's a lot different when you're filming a movie or a commercial because you're not really having people talk directly to the camera. So without doing any work, just in terms of where my head would be pointed. If this was a shot in something narrative or a commercial, I might be somewhere like this. I might be like over here in the frame or something, or like working on the computer. If I was doing something, it could be working on the computer here. So I'm kind of out of the mirror, but if I was maybe here, looking at the computer, and we can see with it off, this sells it a little more on me specifically. I still think that we would need more work done in the back, but um, you can see if I dip down how the light is on my face. Focus. If this was the frame that I wanted to be in, I would just adjust the light, which in a real world scenario would be outside of the window, but in some real world scenarios, you couldn't get it outside the window because you might not have access to the street, you might be on the 40th floor, you might not be able to hang anything or get lights through. So that's where like the light bridge comes into play, where you can mount the mirrors and diffused mirrors outside of the window and then pump light in 
from elsewhere where you don't need to be like on a condor or have light fixtures up high. In this case, if this is the frame that I wanted, I would adjust the light and not adjust my body. But in this case, I'm just gonna lift up a little so that that hard light is just right off of my eye. I have a tube, this tube, which is an Illuminate backed on Kickstarter. Um, but it's bicolor and dimmable. So if I were to put this on the table, we can see with it, without it, So I do get the vibe that it's a bright sunny day outside and if we had another light raking the background or pumped into the ceiling to brighten up the rest of the room that could work or this could just be fine. I mean the light itself in a real world scenario is just not really lighting up the whole room too much. But this at least just gives a little something extra on the talent. Yeah, the light itself is hitting me before it gets to the mirror, which I'm all right with. But again, with a team and with more fixtures, you could you know, tweak this and get it looking good. Speaking of a team, I see a lot of people on YouTube be like how to get cinematic lighting. And there is some good stuff out there, but a lot of people are like lighting themselves, like how I'm lighting myself right now and giving the information like, this is how you do it, this is how you do it in Hollywood, and it's, it's not how you do it. For one, you're rarely in a situation in a Hollywood or a actually cinematic scene or setup where you're just by yourself. So working with a team is like a super valuable part of the process. I've been here for hours just setting up these like simple shots that are far from done. The background hasn't even been touched. I can't even get into that. But when you have a team, there's literally somebody there for set design that is experienced and brings in what you need, makes it look good. And same with your camera and lighting department where like today I had to go move that light. I had to go set up the mirror and like kind of just balance it where it is and all while like coming back and checking the monitor and having me sit in and it just takes forever. So I've always thought about putting a course online and I've talked about it on this channel before and I really want to do it but I do not want it to be here's how you do lighting and have it be the same exact setup that I just did or a similar setup where it's like me and just me moving around the lights. So my buddy Corey wrote a script and we have it on Indiegogo right now. And it's a really cool story that takes place in a location that we scouted and it's like a cabin in the woods and the majority of the film will take place in this cabin. And when we were talking about the budget, like just for the camera team and equipment and lighting team, I was looking for 85,000 for a five day shoot so that we could do it right and have what we need there. The Indiegogo is up for like 63,000 or something. One way that I thought people might have a better time donating, just because it's kind of hard to donate to a film, is to offer an uh, like a behind the scenes class where I break down how we did all of this stuff. This is the opportunity where I can like flex on what I've learned over the past 10, 15 years, get the proper resources and like have a big say in how things are going and like allow my style, which took so many years to develop, to come out into the film and then break it all down and talk to you guys about it. I've been doing this for a long time and have worked in like different areas of production and been on like big sets and small sets and could provide uh, more knowledge than you would typically get from people that are doing this just like kind of on YouTube. Um, Cause again, it's like a whole different ball game when you're working with a crew that knows what they're doing. The option that we put on there for an $80 donation would allow you to have access to the course. And the course, from what I've seen, and like some courses that I have like taken, only a few, uh, have been around like $400. So if we make this movie and I make the course, I will put the course up for $400.
it will be the most valuable $400 you could spend if you are starting out in your filmmaking career. I guarantee you that. Mark my words. And it's only $80 right now. So I, th I think the plan is to raise it back up to 400 in like 48 hours from when this video gets posted. But um, help us make the film and get a $400 course for 80 bucks. So yeah, that's it. I do want to do more lighting stuff on YouTube. I love YouTube. I, I have like some things planned that are like a little bit beyond just lighting uh, that are like more cool and m uh, more fun ideas that I have. Um, so stay tuned for that. And if you have any questions, let me know. Peace.